Oh boy, what a day! What a good, good day! I feel like I need to change our our branding colors to red. We yes, got, we've got Red Nation already going right here with Michele. I am uh, organizing a trying to get Alex to do a Deborah Buckets basketball hour that will be coming your way. So, but just wanted to hop on here. This is not a podcast. This is just going to be just for a few minutes. If you have questions or thoughts, just uh, throw them in the chat. If you're on YouTube or Periscope, thanks for joining us. Uh, Daryl Morey has stepped down as the GM of the Rockets, which to me is not is is certainly surprising here on Thursday mm-hmm. at eleven thirty this morning. But when you think about it, it's not crazy. It's not crazy because his his ownership has backed him into this corner, right? Mm-hmm. And I and I kept telling, I kept saying, like, if they're gonna hire these low level assistants, if they're gonna hire the low level assistant, it's over. You're done. Yeah. You're cooked. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not willing to pay a guy like Tyron Lou. You're cooked. You're done. And Daryl said, you know what? This situation, it's not going to get any better. Our future has been traded away. We have zero young guys. Oh, ha- has been. I I traded away our future. Yeah. Like, like he did. That was a choice that he, he made. He did trade away their future. Yes. But also, the Russell Westbrook deal was, was not a deal that I think that Maury would have wanted. And uh, and now they are just in this position where they are what they are, and mm-hmm. they're not really a championship contender. And the future with Tillman Fertitta at the helm is not bright. There are dark, dark days ahead for the Houston Rockets. Uh, yeah. It's kind of astounding. Yeah, and who knows what – I mean – I'm I'm almost sure that Russ and, and Harden will try to make it work at least for another season. But then what? Yeah. Suppose that you don't have a good coach. Suppose that you are miserable for some reason. Suppose that everything goes wrong and no one wants to sign there because the like your owner is your owner and you don't have uh, a strong GM, then what? Then probably you look elsewhere yourself. I mean, maybe you look to LA, maybe, I don't know, something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not right now. No. Okay. Not right now. Yeah. I mean, it is, <laughs> it's just wild that they, that the Thunder have their picks, you know, yeah. picks become, just became a lot more valuable. And I saw somebody tweet that they don't see Harden sticking around for more than another year. It's it's plausible. I mean, it, it's really possible. Like, you're a superstar. You, you want competitive advantage, and GMs and coaches are part of that. So either they hire a very good GM and a very good coach, mm-hmm. or... Oh, no, like there are GM G, GMs out there that probably are okay or very good. Maybe they will hire, I don't know, uh, a veteran coach that will bond with with Harden and Ross and they can keep it together for two, three years. Then if they are incredibly bad, uh, that could happen in 2024 and 2026. Maybe they even get their picks. It's not super likely. Like the odds are not in their favor, at least to get like both of them. Um, so yeah, it, it's not like stupid to say. Well, Harden might want to leave. I, I think that next year will be extremely important. If it goes bad, I can see them trying to move away from there. Yeah, <laughs> isn't it awesome? <laughs> <laughs> I just can't. I just can't believe it. Uh, Jacob Kearns asks: Is it weird to think that everything Maury did over the past? year was on purpose to screw over Tillman and the dip trade away his future the China thing that severely hurt the value of the Rockets oh man 
You could certainly write a narrative that says yes to this. Yeah. I don't think that's the case. I think that they really did want to try to win the title. And I think the trades they made were the best things for the team in order to maximize the value of Russell Westbrook. Um, but I think the question that you have to ask yourself is, should you be doing everything you can to maximize the value of Russell Westbrook? When it really should be, what can we do to maximize the value of James Harden? Which was, those two things kind of work against each other a little bit. So, um, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, probably you can argue that the Covington trade is a good one anyway, because he has value. Like, after the playoffs, I think uh, after his stint in Houston, I think that his value is even higher than when they got it. But the problem is, if you use him as an asset, like Tucker, like Gordon, well, Gordon is not really an asset due to his contract. But if you use those guys as assets, you don't have players. <laughs> like uh, it, it's already the optimal way to to construct a roster that has Arden and, and Westbrook, and that roster. Failed miserably against the Lakers. It was it was oh. not even a series. So yeah. you, you know that you try to maximize that core. And Russ's health is a big question mark. I want to give him a benefit, the benefit of the doubt. Maybe just with having Russ be in in better health and with another year, maybe they will be better. Now, is that enough? Especially with with, with the Warriors coming back and the Lakers being awesome. I, I don't really know. Maybe the Clippers will find a great coach and they will be awesome again. Who knows? Like they might be better than this year, and still that might be not enough to do anything in the Western Conference. This is how the Western Conference is. Like if they are East, maybe they could get to the Western Conference finals because that talent is hard to find. But in the Western Conference, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Miguel, De Miguel Devella 25 asks, how long before Mora gets hired by a different team? I mean, that's what, to me, he's just in this position where it's probably up to him. Yeah. Because there are probably teams already knocking on his door saying, hey, we would love to have you. Mm -hmm. And so I would think, I mean, if I'm the 76ers, I'm saying whatever you want, man whatever you want come here help us reshape this roster help us build it in a way because maury has been the best at taking a situation that looks like there's nothing you can do and turning it into something very good he's yeah done that throughout you know he's done it every year with the rockets even this past year where it looked like you had this team with Capella and Russ and Harden and Eric Gordon. Eric Gordon was terrible, and it was just like, what are they supposed to do? And they were, I mean, they struggled at times, but I think they did the best thing for that particular team, and he made it happen. Yeah. yeah. And to me, with the Sixers, I think that he would have a vision for it. Uh, but, man. And so it's, there's Swaggy F is saying that, I think Maury may take a year off and Philadelphia has Elton Brand. So he doesn't have like you can make him president of basketball ops and still yeah. keep Elton Brand as the as the general manager. You can give him a different title. But like Elton Brand is still like very new to this job. Yeah. And I'm sure would appreciate some help from a guy like Daryl Maury, who is a, who is very, very good and very experienced at his job. And maybe outside of his comfort zone in Houston, because like when you are in a job and you are very good at it, you probably like you are in a comfort zone. Uh, maybe getting in another organization, maybe in a tougher environment where you have to win the city over, where you win, you have to win the fans over. Uh, not that that is extremely important for a GM, but like having the respect of the press and stuff like that. Um, maybe it will get the best out of him. Um, yeah. You can you can argue that, yes, he did everything he could to maximize James Harden, but what what is the, the result? Like, he traded for a superstar, and he won that trade. 
he then built a roster, a very competitive one. He changed coaches. He mortgaged his like the future of the franchise to some degree, not to an extreme degree, because they still control um, a huge part of the future. And like, in what's what's the outcome? It's still maybe it's dependent on the star that he got, but still the result is no real result. Like they were good in the West, not great. They didn't have. Well, they they were the team that give the um, the Warriors the best run. I mean, they were great in those series, but they lost. Yeah. And and even if we shouldn't say it was it was not even a question because like that game seven was a tough one to swallow. Uh, it did happen, and and like. It's still enough for me to to say, well, probably he will take a year off because he wants to take a year off. Uh, yeah, and that like next season someone will hire him, almost for sure. Mm-hmm. But still, you have you have you have to see. I mean, h- how he will handle things in in his next year. Maybe he will improve, and like he's already one of the top ten, top fifty, top ten GMs in the league. So, oh yeah, top five probably. Yes, probably. Yeah, he's he's very very good at ta- at yeah. talent acquisition. Yeah, he's very very yeah. good. I wonder, like, put him in in Milwaukee. Does he have the same leverage that he has in Houston? Houston is a big city; it's a big market. Yeah, you can, you can get players there. I wonder. Well, he made awesome trades, like really really awesome trades. Like the Chris Paul trade was insanely good. From a technical perspective, from the value, from every point of view, uh, the rust trade not so much, but still, those two picks could be very well two two seconds. And then, if those become two seconds and no swaps because OKC is bad, then that trade is good as well. Yeah. So, so yeah, trade wise, he's probably one of the best. Yeah, he's very good and should have a job soon. But just to sign off. But I gotta say, I'm just fired up to be here today. It's pretty cool. Pretty damn cool. Woo!